So today I want to present my personal open source project NimView. So what is NimView and how can you use it? NimView is a UI helper for offline mobile or cloud applications. It makes it possible to write the front end with your favorite dry <laughs> JavaScript UI framework like React, jQuery or Svelte and write your backend code with Nim, which is an easy programming language and my current favorite. Or if you are used to more common languages, you can also write the backend in Python, C or C++. NimView itself relies heavily on two major libraries, the Nim HTTP server and WebView. And the final result of a NimView application is a binary that runs on desktop in a cloud environment or on Android devices without much modification. So to get started with NimView, you need to install Nim first. So go to the home page, click on install Nim, use your operating system, and then just download it. So first you need to download NimView with the package manager. Um, and just wait for it until it's installed. It's kind of automatic. And you may also create some new file, which we may call app.nim. And there you go. Installation was successful and you can start coding. And it's kind of simple. You can, for Hello World application, you just need some some HTML file, which might be this. And just start. with this file and there you go. That's your simple Hello World application. And we just need to compile it, MC, run it. And there we go. We'll start with the HTTP server example. Um, there we have our Hello World. And so the debug code always starts an HTTP server, or not always, but um, if you if you type in start, it will start an HTTP server. If you want some desktop application, you will have to perform some release build. And there you have your Hello World in a desktop binary. If you still want the HTTP server, you can um, use the function start HTTP server, which will enforce to start the HTTP server. Um, but we don't want to do this here. So this would be a very simple example of a Hello World application. Um, Let's just make a, some proper HTML code here. Let's have some HTML tag with some head and some, some body. And let's just check it. It's still the same application. It just doesn't look different. There it is. And now if we just um, have some input fields here, we just create some input tags in HTML. Input type. Let's make a numeric type. number id 
this. Sample input. And we create a button for it. Let's just check how it looks. So we have some number. And nothing happens yet. So why doesn't anything happen yet? Because we don't have any JavaScript. So let's just write some JavaScript function. And what do we want to do with this function? We want to have um, we want to have the value of the input there. Um, that's sample input. So let's just alert it. So what do we have here now? We have our HTML. We have, let's add some line break. We have some hello world texts. We have some input field and a button. And if we click on the button, there should be some JavaScript function, which gets the value of the previous input field and opens an alert window to print this value. So, we have some window and it prints two, which is a value. If we change the value, it just prints a value. Okay, so that's basically all. We have our HTML code with some JavaScript. And now we want to actually fire some function. In our backend code. And to do that, we just add the function, we name it um, call backend. We name it call backend and we want some function that gets an end. And it should also return some value. Let's just also return a number. And we just want to return the number times two. And how do we call it now in the front end here? So first we need to download um, some JavaScript file to actually trigger the and to connect our front end with the back end we need to download some JavaScript first. We can download it with um, some browser or anything. It's just in a GitHub, GitHub repository. And it's called NimView. And if we want some have some compatibility code, we just use the IIFE file and call it NimView.js. And we need some script source.
and to call this function on the back end, we just call it here. So it's backend dot call backend, and that's basically all. And I accept that we don't return the value directly. But we have some async callback. Let's add some add, let's add some line wrap here. Function response. We want just to alert a response. Okay, there we go. Oh, wrong function. So we plus we insert twelve and the result should be twenty four because we have number times two. We can also have number times three just to restart it. So it should be a thirty six here. And it is thirty six. So that's actually how you have some backend function and um, yeah, connected to the front end. Thank you.